What about you, Mr. Evans? What did you think you were going to be when you were younger? If I tell you, will you try not to laugh? Of course. I always thought I would have my own television program to talk about etiquette. I didn't know you were so interested in etiquette. I have always loved etiquette. I think I would have made a great television etiquette teacher. Well, I think you could still do it. It's perfect for you. Really? Why? Well, you're very polite, for one thing. You always know which fork to use at a restaurant? That's a real talent. <laughs> You've taught me a lot about the customs of other cultures. Maybe I could still give it a try. <laughs> Today's topic, dinner conversation. If your international guests look offended and are leaving the table early, you've probably chosen a topic that's taboo in their home country. Find out what's acceptable and what's not. Coming up on International Etiquette with Evans. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Unforgettable. You have a real talent, all right? <laughs> No. I didn't know that planning a wedding would be so hard. Mm. Marie, could you give us your opinion on a few things? I'd love to. First, how many people should we invite? Bob wants a small wedding. Twenty guests would be nice. I want a large wedding. About 300 people. 300? <laughs> Yesterday you said 200. I have a lot of relatives who want to come. Then there's the location. I always thought I'd get married in a park or at the beach. That's so romantic. I would like to get married indoors, where I won't get wet if it's raining. That makes sense. I prefer traditional music in the ceremony. Contemporary music. I'd like a long ceremony and a short reception. I want a short ceremony and a huge celebration afterwards. I want a white cake. And I want... A chocolate cake. I know. How are we ever going to agree on this? Don't hurt yourself. Here's an idea that might work. Plan a wedding that's big enough to include all of Cheryl's family... Sorry, Bob. In the park on Oak Street that has that building where you can go if it rains. You can have traditional music in the ceremony and contemporary music at the party. And you could have two cakes at the reception, one white and one chocolate. Sounds okay to me. Me too. Hey, we did it! Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Marie, thank you so much. You're amazing. We couldn't have done it without you. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi. Lunch time is over. Are you coming up to the office? I'm too tired to go back to the office. Planning a wedding is hard work. I need a holiday. <laughs> Let's make today a holiday. Well, tell Mr. Evans we can't come back to work. That's a great idea. What are we celebrating? You're getting married. How about National Wedding Day? What happens on National Wedding Day? I don't know. Why am I the one who has to think about it? Why don't we make it National Singles Day instead? All the married people give gifts to their single friends. No. Buying gifts is hard work. 
I want to enjoy myself on our new holiday. What about a red day? Everybody wears red clothes, and there's dancing in the street that goes on all night. How about national buy your friend another cup of coffee? <laughs> nice try. How about national on time day? <laughs> What happens on national on time day? You remind one another to come back to work on time. <laughs> Happy holiday. Waitress. So, Mrs. Beatty, you're looking for an exciting place for your next vacation. I usually travel to major cities in Europe, but this time I want to go someplace different, someplace away from the city, as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah, how about California? The Big Sur area is spectacular. California has lots of earthquakes, doesn't it? Well, they have earthquakes occasionally, but not very often. But it does have earthquakes. Yes. I'm not going. Okay. How about some place in Asia, a beach in Thailand? Kochang has beautiful beaches, and it's very quiet there. A quiet beach sounds nice. But they said on the news there's a monsoon in Thailand. <laughs> But the monsoon will be over by the time you go. What else can you recommend? Australia. The Australian outback is amazing. I've heard they have tornadoes in Australia. <laughs> in some parts. Where else? Jamaica. Hurricanes. South Africa. Floods. Hawaii. Landslides. You know a lot about natural disasters, don't you, Mrs. Beatty? Let's see. What about Finland? Finland. It's wild, beautiful, and very different from other parts of Europe. And nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Finland sounds good. I'll go to Finland. <laughs> Great. I'll book your tickets. <laughs> okay. I just booked your tickets to Helsinki, Finland. You'll be staying at the Palace Hotel. That's great. Excuse me, Mr. Evans. Yes, Marie. Mr. Woods is on the phone. He told me to tell you it's urgent. Urgent? He's traveling, you know. Yes. He said there's some kind of epidemic. What kind of epidemic? It sounds like it's that new influenza. But he was vaccinated for that before he left. I know, but he told me to tell you that he wants to fly home today. On the internet, it says only three people are sick. That is not an epidemic, and it's not like anybody's dying from this flu. He said he didn't want to be the first. <laughs> Where is he traveling, may I ask? He's in Finland. Finland? I just booked tickets to Finland. Mrs. Beatty, everything will be fine. You'll get vaccinated, and you'll have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to Finland. You told me nothing bad ever happens in Finland, Mrs. Beatty. I can't think of anywhere in the world you can go and be completely safe. Right here in this city, you could go outside and get hit by a bus, but you can't let that stop you from doing the things you want to do. <laughs> Look, why don't we go to lunch, and we'll talk it over. <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. Dining alone? Uh, 
Paul and Marie went to get newspapers. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, please, sit down. May I ask what you're reading? Um, <laughs> A History of the World. The bestseller? I'm very impressed. Reading nonfiction over lunch? I hear that it's a very difficult book. Uh, no, it's, it's a pretty easy read. I, I can't put it down, actually. <laughs> a real page-turner, huh? Do you think that I could borrow it when you're done? Sure. I usually prefer fiction myself. You know, thrillers, mysteries. There's nothing like curling up with a good science fiction novel, is there? You read science fiction, too? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Are you learning a lot from your book? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, tell me what you're reading about right now. Um, this part is about Great Britain. <laughs> really? Do you mind if I take a look? <laughs> Cheryl hates when I read comics. Then I can understand why you can't put the book down. <laughs> you think that I could borrow it then? Well, I'm still reading this one, but I have another one I can loan you. I meant this one. Oh. Help yourself.